having a great weekend and a great Labor Day weekend. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed yesterday. We had a lot of uh, excitement in the college football world yesterday. A lot of upset picks. Also had a lot going on in the NFL with the Vikings proving again that they're going to probably not do good this year from their mistake they made. But we'll get to that later. So what do we got for today? Well, just you know, touching on what you said, yeah, it's so much happened yesterday with all the new different news that were coming out between the trade, you know, Mark Sanchez being cut, and you have college football weekend, which was so many good games. Yes. Um, first, we'll come back to that. Going to earlier in the week, though, you know, just kind of touch base on this a little bit. Hope Solo booted off of the national team. That's not surprising. You know, originally came down as a six month, six month suspension. Then it was just, nope, get out, and we want you gone. And, you know, some, like Hope Solo, she doesn't quite understand, which I wouldn't expect her well, to I be happy about it. it. But I, I, I don't expect her to be happy about right. it. Right. But, I mean, I get where they're coming from. So, like, I know, you know, people are kind of comparing, oh, what Hope Solo did, she gets booted off the team. Whereas what Ryan Lochte did, he, you know, was probably just going to be suspended or whatever. But there point. is there's a difference. Ryan Lochte is kind of an isolated incident. Granted, mm. significantly worse. Yeah. But an isolated incident. Hope Solo has had kind of a string of things it's going kind of on that's, wavelength. you know, kind of, you know, rubbed everyone in the soccer community the wrong way. You know, going from being arrested back in June 2014 on two counts of misdemeanor, counts of assault. Mm. Charges were later dismissed, though, but you had that stigma. You had some nude photos leaked. You had... What? Yeah, you know, that celebrity photo thing. Oh, one of them. that's right. Um, a lot of... She got, you know, rubbed a lot of the players the wrong way. A lot of players in her kind of butted heads. You had the whole comments about the Zika thing, you know, leading into the... Olympics, which you know annoyed, you know the Brazilians and the Brazilian government and all that. Then you had this happen. So you know U.S. Soccer is like oh, enough is enough. Just, no, I mean she's getting older anyways. It's not like she was going to be there for the next World Cup or Olympics. Or probably. Not. I mean, she's up for thirty, so I mean, right. Yeah, it wasn't going to happen. So you know what? You're not going to be around long anyways. This is six months in, I forget. Just you know we're just going to cut cut ties, move on. And, you know, I get that. You know, if you have all these things going on, at some point enough is enough. You know, and right. main, the main thing is, is not getting along with the teammates. If you can't get along with the teammates, because a lot of the younger players kind of just seem, did not seem to get along with her. Gotta have that chemistry. Yeah, the chemistry is chemistry. huge. And then, you know, calling, you know, the Swedes a cow, you know, cowards and have the teammates come out and be like, whoa, 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 that's, that's not what we think. You know, hope, and shut up, you know. Lose respectably. Exactly. So I mean, I get, I get where they're coming from. I get why they suspended, suspend or kicked her off, and I don't really see any, I don't see any issue with it. You know, but then again, I, I'd be okay if they booted Ryan Lochte off for what he did. So it just hasn't come, you know, it hasn't come as quickly as you know the other or the, you know, the others. So I mean, oops, and he's coming. Sorry. It's all right. It's all good. You, you okay? You got it. You got it. I'm good, okay? Yeah, I'm good. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I don't have any issues, I guess, with um, Hope Solo. You know, they gave her countless chance after countless chance, and there's only, like I said, there's only so many times or so many chances you can give somebody, and there's definitely red flags if you're not getting along with your teammates because you built that chemistry. Mm hmm. And if you can't get along with your teammates, then that's gonna throw off probably the whole chemistry of the whole team. So I exactly I don't I don't see a problem with it. No. Um, she should. Maybe it's a humbling experience. Maybe. Um, it should be, but I mean now, granted, you know obviously you know, she'll still be on the team she plays for in the women's professional soccer league. Mm -hmm. But you know, as far as like world competition goes, she's she's done. Yeah. I mean. She's not going to be able to be, you know, show how much it's humbled her in that experience, you know, come back and be, you know, kind of a better teammate or say she'll learn from mistake because that portion of it, done, forget about it. Now she can only try to so just finish off her career. her career then, shorten her career because she won't be able to play only in the world, world competition. Cups. But I mean, she can, and they still have the women's, you know, professional right. soccer league that she can play, and that's basically what she's down to, unless she wants to maybe go play overseas with, you know, you know whatever leagues they have over there, you know, but yeah, for the most part, 
I mean, with, as far as U.S. Mm -hmm. soccer goes, she's she's done. <coughs> Good. So yeah, there's, she's <coughs> done. But you know, we're both in agreement there. You know what happens? We're both fine with. Now, going back to some of the news from yesterday. Mm. Roll it, baby. Teddy Bridgewater goes down. Oh. So early yesterday, trade comes out. Rolls injury. Bradford is traded from the Eagles to the Vikings for a first round pick next year and a conditional fourth round pick in 2018. The Vikings have an injured quarterback, so they give up a decent amount for another quarterback that hasn't played a full season He's not that in a number of years. He's not that true. So, I mean, the, I'm sure the Eagles, when the Vikings said, hey, we'll give you a first and a fourth, they said, uh, bye, you know, okay. Done, sign right here, let's get this deal finished up. We're, they're getting a first round pick that they traded away to get Carson Wentz. They got that right back. Exactly, that's so, the big I mean, thing. They, yeah. the Eagles are, yes, score. The Vikings, oh, I, I don't know if I understand that pick. You know, I, I don't. I don't see a huge difference between what Sean Hill would do and what Sam Bradford would do. Now, Sam Bradford, yeah, former number o, you know, former number one overall pick, but has not lived up close to the expectations he had. And he has been he has proven that he is injury prone. I mean, I'm sure they shipped him in a glad you know, a box stamped fragile on it, you know, sent, and when they shipped him, you know, because the Vikings were like, well, we want you to, you know, not get hurt once you step off the plane, which is a very real possibility. Step off the plane, oh, tear another ACL. so bad. So. That would be the worst. I mean, a oh. first round pick and a fourth round pick for a one year rental is what it comes down to. Right. It's a one year rental. To me, that is way too much to give up for a one-year rental on a player who you don't even know is going to play the full season. So, so one first thing, Viking fans that watch our YouTube channel, you can't complain that we don't give your Vikings showtime, because this is probably the only showtime they'll have the whole year, but still. Not at Bridgewater's out, probably. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I mean, with Bridgewater, if Bridgewater was still going to be in there, they'd be legit, you know, and Super Bowl contenders. Yeah. Whereas now that Bridgewater's out, it's... They're at most. They might make the playoffs. That's a slight maybe if their defense Ooh, stays is healthy. Very slight. Um, you know, uh, there, There is some hope, though, Viking fans, for this. You know, you have a player who was kind of... Had his feelings hurt when he saw in the draft that the Eagles drafted Carson Wentz. You know, if he stays healthy, you got a guy coming that has something that wants to prove something. Maybe yeah. will he do that? I don't know. Will he stay healthy? That's the big factor. He has a lot of injury in his track record. Um, to me, it's too much to give up for him. Um, if he was a proven commodity, maybe. Yeah. But. He's not. Now, admittedly, when he was with the Eagles last year, the later part of the season, he started coming on. The latter part-ish. Um, but the issue I think we're going to find out is, he is he going to be a game manager, or is he going to be able to, you know, take shots down the field? You know, they can't. They can't hand the ball to AP every play, which they might do a lot of. Oh, they're going to do it a lot. Um, and the thing with that, you know, is going to be, will AP get tired as the season goes on, having 20-plus mm -hmm. carries a game? Um, so, I mean, it's... To me, it's... I wouldn't... I, would, I think they gave up too much for him. Um, I wish him the best, you know. He already... Kind of didn't want to come to play the Eagles after they drafted Carson Wentz. Yeah, he had held out there for a while. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you, they gave up way too much. But now, the Vikings should have known that, obviously the Eagles didn't think high enough of them, which no. is why they traded up to get Carson Wentz. Exactly. So That's they the knew aspect. Bradford's like, you know, we're going to you know, get this, you know, have him play out the remainder of his contract, but after that, we don't want him. So... The Vikings are like, well, clearly they don't have an, you know enough faith in him to want to be their future. So we're going to give away a first round and a fourth round for him 
to get one year out of him in hopes that we can make a run at the Super Bowl, which he doesn't provide enough for them to make that run. Bridgewater in there, yes, they had enough to be a legit Super Bowl contender. Without him, you know, whether it's Sean Hill, whether it's Sam Bradford, they're going to rely on their quarterbacks now to be more of a game manager. They don't want them to make the big mistake by throwing an interception, doing whatever. It's going to be the issue down the field. You know, AP, 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 pass, AP, AP, AP. And now, with that, I mean, that's going to win you some games, but AP, depending on how much they run them, eventually is going to get tired. Later, like you mentioned, later half in the season, it's going to wear him because his style of running is, you know, ground and pound. Yeah, gonna run Yards into after you, contact. Which you know, he does need to make sure that he goes out of bounds. He doesn't take those big hits. Because <laughs> if he gets hurt, they're really oh, in trouble. Yeah, if he gets hurt, they're they're <laughs> they're fighting for the number one pick. You know that that's the case. But I mean. I don't see a huge win differential between Sean Hill and Sam Bradford. I don't. Maybe Sam Bradford accounts for one extra game. And we, he could surprise us. I mean, he Possibly, could. Possibly, but, but is, that, history, is that one ex possible extra game enough to justify your first and a fourth round pick? I don't think it is. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the beauty of uh, the NFL this year. You know, we're not... If he comes out and play and comes out balling... Then yeah, it was justifiable. Like yeah. yeah, but if it comes out snowball and they look terrible, yeah, and that's you know him kind of for one extra win is dependent on him staying on the field the entire year, which as like I said for him has been a challenge in of itself. Now, granted, he's made it through the preseason without being hurt, so that's a positive. That's a step in the right direction for him. But also another thing is. He has to learn a new system quick. in a very quick, quick time. I mean, it's not like you know this was done, you know, beginning of preseason, so he had plenty of time to, you know, adjust to everything, learn the playbook. No, it's like, hey, we're training. Oh, by the way, in a week you're starting in the regular season, so have fun, buddy. learn the playbook in a have week. Fun, buddy. So plus he also has no timing with the receivers. There's a That's lot a that goes into thing. it. You know, so I mean, it's. Not only is it just, you know, they gave up too much, there's not a whole lot. I mean, he's starting immediately behind the eight ball with not knowing the playbook, not having the timing with the receivers. There's a lot that... They're pretty much, they're literally it. throwing them to the wolves. Basically. One and say, do your best. Do your yeah. Best. So I mean, that is... It's going to be an uphill climb for him, to say the least. I wish him the best. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's in the division of my Packers, so... If you don't wish him anything but the board. If he doesn't play well, uh, I don't feel too bad. But, I mean, you know, you always you know, say, you know, to be the best, you know, you want your team to beat the players of the best. I want the Packers to be able to beat the Vikings at their best. Iron if the Packers are, iron. If the Packers are going to win, I want them to beat the team at their best. Because I don't want that, you know, other fan base to have that excuse, like, oh, well, he gives it up for a this time. He wasn't exactly. ready. So I want them to be at the best. So that way, well, if one, it just makes for better football when both teams are at their best playing. Iron sharpens iron. Exactly. So, and then two, it's just, you know, they don't, other fans are faceless and have that excuse. So, I mean, now, went over, you know, with the ideas for the Vikings and what that does. Now, the Eagles... That was th going to be their starters, Bradford. Now, they the said it's going to start be... if he's healthy, if his ribs are healed. Yeah, up. it's going to be Carson Wentz Carson. pending his rib injury. So, we're both NDSU fans. We're happy to see this. But, you know, we're happy to see him in the NFL. Like, I can tell you probably feel the same way I do. I'm not thrilled that he's going to be starting right away. No. I was wanting him to sit out. I... I, but, I don't... Don't get me wrong, you know, Carson, I'm really happy for you, you know, as a huge, huge NDSU fans, we're all pulling for you over here in North Dakota, um, but, yeah, I I would like, I would have liked to see him at least sit out his first two seasons to learn under a veteran, learn the playbook, 
Yeah. Um, now, granted, you know, sitting out learning from veteran, he already said that he didn't study any tape on Sam Brad because he wanted to study winner. He's like Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, <laughs> Peyton Manning. So, you know, was it going to be that beneficial to him to sit behind oh, Sam Bradford? No, it wasn't. But now it's him and Charlie Daniels. Charlie Daniels has a career backup. Yeah. He's not going to learn much from him. So, I mean, at this point in the case, he's clearly, he doesn't have a choice, he's not going to be able to sit behind a veteran, because Charlie Daniels hasn't played much at all. So, it's either sit behind a career backup and just watch him and try to learn from him, or just have him start his experience that way. If you look if you look at it that way, he really, the Eagles have got nothing to lose. They don't. I mean, I mean he, no one's expecting them to win. No. So, might as no, well just... Carson could... Shock people, you know. He had the rep in the draft as a small time, small town quarterback and smaller well, schools. He and can he can do a lot for the small town schools because, okay, it's Jared Goff. He got picked above Carson Wentz because his big time school California, experience. Yeah. You know, he went to the big schools. He's used to playing under the big lights or whatever. And then you got Carson Wentz went to smaller NDSU. He's not used just to won it. A title, no big deal. So Jared titles. Goff has played. Terribly awful preseason. Yes, horrible. Awful. Not good at all. So, okay, if he's so ready for the big time, why is he playing so bad? Exactly. And so now Carson Wentz comes out like, hey, I play in a small town school, but he can light it up. And, and he's going to probably start, and Goff's going to be on the bench. Yeah, and he can put that whole small town school, big town school thing to rest. It's like, you don't have to play in a big time school in order to be a good player, which is true. Of the I, NFL analysts think differently, apparently. And I don't get it. I mean, granted, yeah, you're not used to playing in front of that many people, you know, because the small towns, they're not going to draw have the amount of people at a game. Like, Flacco and, went to Delaware. He turned out well, pretty exactly. decently. So you're not going to have the amount of people at a game, like, you know, you're right. in the, the NFL or a big, you know, big-time yeah. school. But just because you're not used to playing in front of that many people doesn't mean you can't play well. Now, granted, they're both playing in... I don't know, like hostile environments. You got L.A. First year which, back in L.A. Now, I think Goff has a little bit of leeway there because L.A. right now, they're just happy to have a team. Mm -hmm. So you could play bad, but they have a team. They're excited. Right. Eagles, they are they're... notoriously rough. Yeah, they're kind of harder on their players their first kind year. Kind of is an understatement. They are horribly more rough on their players. They have a courthouse Eagles. in their stadium. Yeah, I mean, this is a, t you know, fan City base. City we love. This is the fan base that threw snowballs at Santa. So that's yeah. the kind of people that you're going to play for. So they are, mm. they're rough. They're, you know, if you don't play well, oh, they're going to let you know. And they're going to let you know badly. So, I mean, Wentz is going to have that pressure. You're going to have to play well to win these fans over. They're not going to accept anything, you know, minor. They want, you. they spent a lot to get him. So they're going to want to see some good play out of him. I think he's going to rise to the occasion. I, I honestly so. do. I, I honestly hope he plays very well. You know, whether, I mean, now, he can play well and the team's not going to do well because I don't think they have a defense or anything. And now they don't have much. I, I know Nelson Aguilar. I don't know if he's healthy yet. I think he last time I heard he was hurt. Well, even, even they don't have a lot to throw to. Well, exactly. He doesn't have a lot around him on offense to work with. So, I mean... You also have to keep kind of keep that in perspective. Yeah. Like, who is he throwing it to? The defense is bad. I mean, it's just an all-around not a very good team. The only plus part, I guess, is he does he is playing in the NFC leagues, where the division's kind of wide open. Oh yeah, you got Dallas, who Tony Romo's down with an injury. The Redskins. They're you know, starting a rookie. The Cowboys, yeah. Dak Prescott. Yeah. Then you have the Redskins, who you know people still aren't sold on them even after last year. They're still not completely sold. Then you have the, the Giants, who I think are going to be... The Giants picked the win, might win that division. Yep, we both picked them. And then, yeah, you have the Eagles. So, I mean, it's not a strong division no. at all. So, he'll have that going for him. So, I hope, I really hope he does well. I'm you pulling know, for I him. I want to see him do well. Everyone in North Dakota basically wants to see him yeah. do well, because he's representing... He's got a whole state. He's representing the entire state, yeah. So, I really hope he does well. You know, like I said, he doesn't have a lot around him, so we'll see. You know, but that trade, I think the Eagles came out on the better half of that trade, Absolutely. and the Vikings, I, they way overpaid. They can build for the future. The Eagles continue to build. Exactly, because if the Vikings do bad this year, because the Eagles are going to root for the Vikings to do bad, because they have their mm -hmm. first-round pick. 
The worse they do, the higher pick they get. Exactly. So the Eagles fans are going to be rooting strongly against the Vikings because they want a high pick. Which, if the Vikings do poorly, they got. Well, and then you run into the thing with Bridgewater. You know, he had a horrific injury. They had they only had to sedate him to just to get him to the yeah, hospital. Yeah, his leg is because from just what messed up. from a report I read, his legs snapped and. His knee was pretty much dangling or flailing around. Yeah, or his knee was dislocated. The ACL was completely torn. So it's at least a 12 month recovery. So that's pushing it really close to the start of next year. So is he even going to be ready for the start of next season? That is even in question. I'd, you know, the, the positive thing he has going for him, though, is a lot of players in the NFL now, they come back from ACL injuries, but not a dislocated knee. Though. But also, when you look at RG3, they rushed him back. Look at what it did to him. Right. So you also, the Vikings also have to be cautious, you know, cautious of it because you don't want to rush him back and have it be like an RG3 scenario where then he isn't playing right, he's favoring it, then he hasn't pointed out another injury. You want This is your franchise quarterback. You want him back yeah. at 100%. So does that mean you have to sacrifice, you know, half the year without him next year to make sure he's one hundred percent? Oh, I personally if would it too. Was me. Yeah, I mean, I would. Like I said, I don't want him to come back with any doubt in his mind. Like, oh, is my knee ready? Is my knee ready? Is my knee ready? And then that's going to affect his play. And that's the other thing too. You know, everybody talks about always oh, got a the twelve month re um, recovery, but he also has the mental thing too. You know that yep. he. He didn't get it getting hit. It was a freak incident just dropping back. He planted and just well, yeah, pretty much gave it. It was a non contact injury. It was just so happening during practice. He's got to have it in his head okay, when I drop back, my knee's not going to give out. Plus, he has to get, he's going to have to start from scratch pretty much, get his footwork back down, yeah. quarterback mechanics. So, I mean, he's, I'm pulling for him, but he, he's got kind of a big road to go. Yeah, and he's starting off with the you know right aspect of it. The tweets he's you know put out over the past few days. I mean, he's going at it with a strong head, so it's just it's going to be a lot of a lot of work for him. Um, so now, quickly, you know, this weekend start of college football. Two games in particular that really stand out: number three Oklahoma losing to number fifteen Houston. Which, depending on who you talk to, some people weren't that shocked. A lot of people were picking. I thought Houston, Houston was going to win. I honestly did. Uh, they, I like their QB. They won pretty, you know, handily, and that was a good big win for Houston because that solidifies them as a potential playoff contender. Then you have number five LSU losing to unranked Wisconsin. And I'm a Florida State fan in football, um, in Division One A, if that's what it is. But I thought that was an epic game. It was a very good game. I watched, you know, me and you both watched that entire game. With the exception of a 60-second span where LSU got a pick six and then Wisconsin fumbled and they scored a touchdown. With the exception of pretty that 60-second span, that entire mm -hmm. game was dominated by Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin, yeah. really, they should have won by they more. They just didn't capitalize on a few opportunities that got yeah. away from them. So, LSU with Leonard Fournette, potential Heisman winner, he looked Bad he didn't look first good half. yesterday. First half was yeah. held to like 38 yards. They were barely on the field though, too. Yeah. Wisconsin won the time of the clock possession. Now, second half, Fournette did turn it up some, but he also left with an injury at the end of the game. He actually had to be helped off the field. Is that going to be an injury that lingers? I don't know. But, I mean, LSU did not look great against an unranked team. No one has any aspirations for Wisconsin this year. But they were they, underdog, but they yeah. made a statement yesterday. Oh, sure. they made a big statement, you know, yesterday with, you know, beating, you know, knocking off number five. Now LSU has going for him is, if you're going to lose, you want to lose early in the season because you can make up for right. the season goes on. But still, I mean, that's... That's a game on their resume. Yeah. That could hurt them in the playoff selection if they're one of those last four. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, you know, you lost to an unranked team. Plus, did what Wisconsin do give, you know, a tape on how to beat LSU. Because so, you know what, everyone's going to be watching, okay, what did Wisconsin do to stop for that? Let's you know. see if we can mimic that. And so now LSU's going to have to come back and figure out you know, how to do that. And, you know, and I mean, it. the Badgers, they had, a lot of, they had a lot of added motivation playing in their pro football team stadium. Yeah, playing in yeah. Lambeau. Bart Houston, the quarterback yeah. for Wisconsin, named after Bart Starr. So, I mean, they, they had a lot of added motivations yeah. to that game. ESPN College Game Day was there. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers was there to get picks. In. Yeah. Was only one out of the you know, people to pick of the ESPN Game Day to pick Wisconsin. 
and he came out right. So yeah, there was a lot. They had a lot of extra hype and motivation going into that game. Um, but at the end of the game, now, you know, the last play LSU runs is an interception. Yeah. Wisconsin player catches it. He's down. So in college, once you're down, you're down. So he catches it, falls down, gets back up, holds the ball up, starts celebrating. His teammates come around him. LSU lineman comes and oh, I saw that play. Just that kind of... absolutely levels him. That was a little. That was uncalled for. That and, was completely uncalled for. Yeah, he gets for. ejected, which should have. Now at the end, Les Miles is like, "Oh, I have to watch the tape because he could have just thought that the guy was, you know, still running. You know, the ref still in blew play. the whistle. Blew the rest of the guys just running the ball in the air like this. Yeah, who intercepts the ball and like celebrates running down the field while they st can still be tackled? No one's gonna hold a ball up like this if they're running. No, they're gonna ball to be tucked away and they're gonna be trying to run. No, he caught it, fell down, whistle blows. He stands up, holds the ball. His teammates are just coming around to you know jumping on Brad and this guy just comes and levels him. He's now, just mad that they lost, but yeah, that's frustrating. But show up. That to me, that player he needs to be suspended for at least the game. That was just an uncalled for hit. Horrible. You know, just a horrible. It's a very malicious play. Oh, yeah. I mean, granted, you know, Los Miles plans a huge home. Oh, I thought the game was still in play. Ball was still in play. No, you didn't. He blew the. I heard he, the whistle blow. That player knew exactly yeah. what he was doing. He was just getting but, some frustration out. He, The team had been dominated all game, and now it's just, you know what? Knock him out. There's only, you know, a minute left. It's not going to affect his team any, him getting ejected because the game's over. So he just lets some frustration out, moves on, and so I hope he gets suspended. He needs to be suspended for I something like, like that. Um, on the brighter side, touching on the Nebraska game, the very first time they needed a punt, they went out with ten players, left a punter spot empty. For Sam Fultz, who had passed, who was killed in a car accident, mm -hmm. took the delay of game penalty and honor for him. On the Twitter, they said um, had to take the delay of game. There were only ten players in the field. We couldn't get the Hunter out there, yeah. So that was a very classy move by Nebraska, and you know it's unfortunate you, know, you have to do something like that, but it is a very classy move by them. I like that. Yeah. Finally, <laughs> NFL starts this Thursday. Thank Broncos, the Lord. Panthers, rematch Lord. of the Super Bowl. Broncos look significantly different than they did. Significantly the different. Significantly. Significantly. Different. They lost Peyton Manning. Can we have a bigger different. word than significantly? I don't. I don't know. Is there a bigger word in the dictionary? So you got Panthers returning basically everyone with the exception of Josh Norman. They that was a big loss for him. But everyone else, they get they have Benjamin coming back. That's a big plus on their offense. So everyone's coming back with the exception of that big loss in Benjamin, or not Benjamin, but uh, Norman. Mm -hmm. Broncos, their big loss is a huge loss. They lost a lot of players on their defense, too. And they lost Peyton Manning. And they lost Peyton Manning. They lost their Hall of Fame quarterback. Now, they picked up Sanchez, which they thought was going to be the key, which turns out, nope, he got cut. He's going to Dallas. Sorry, Dallas. That was a stupid pick. I feel bad for the guy. So, okay. now they have Simeon, who's going to be their starter, and Lynch has their backup. Is that enough for them to beat the Panthers? Um, I'm going to go out on a limp and say no, because when you play the team that you beat the last season, the Panthers and Cam Newton have all that motivation from the summer. They didn't play good. He couldn't pass. He had the worst game. Plus, and, they have to watch the And they have to watch that the, banner get yeah, thrown get the in the banner, ring. Yeah, the celebrations. Exactly. They have to watch that. They are going to be hyped and pumped to just go They're going to be heated. Yeah. So, I'm with you. The Panthers, I think, are going to come out, and I think they're going to lit give it to you. Oh, definitely. Broncos. I don't care if it's in Mile High, and I'm sorry, Bronco fans, but... No, plus, I mean, they have... The Broncos quarterback has only taken one snap, and that was for a kneel down. Yeah. So, you're... He didn't look that great in preseason, either. And he's going against a good defense. Yeah, everybody's saying that the Panthers aren't going to be the same. Well, they're, they're not going to be the same because, you know, Norman was a big loss. Right, they're saying but they're not going to be as good, but they bring back the core. They bring back core, and, you know, as long as you have Keekly there, that's a big the, portion of your a big defense because he's the, you know, he's the, he's the quarterback yes. of their defense. Yeah. So, they can make up for the loss of Norman, and I think that they will. <laughs> I, You know, the Broncos, their defense will still be good, but they I gotta think, get blows to go off the field. Yeah, and I don't think that you know the offense is gonna stay off the field long enough for the defense to get any rest. 
So I think you know eventually you know, it's going to be a tight game. I think in the first half, second half the Broncos defense is just going to start getting worn down, and the Panthers are going to take advantage of that, and they're going to start pull away in the second half and end up with the win. Yeah, I'm going Carolina. So I don't know what the score will be, but I'm going. I think the Panthers are going to win. Me too, and I'm just excited for football to be back. Got college this weekend, NFL next weekend. This is getting to be the best time of year for sports. College football starting, NFL starting, the playoff races are heating up, NBA starting soon. So you don't get much of a better time in sports than it is right now. So we're gonna have some good episodes coming up. Exactly, there's gonna be so much to talk about. But everyone, like our Facebook page, like your video, subscribe to YouTube, share with your friends, let everyone know about it. So much to talk about in the upcoming weeks part of the NFL. It's gonna be some good times. Hope everyone has a happy Labor Day weekend. Enjoy your time off. I know I'm willing to. Good luck, Carson. Yes, good luck, Carson. Everyone enjoy the rest of your weekend.